Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We have been talking about the law of faith. And we've talked about why we need faith, who our faith is in, who can have faith. And then we're looking at what, what faith is. And we said last week that there are two kinds of faith, the natural kind of faith that believes what you can see and feel when there is physical evidence. And then there is the God kind of faith that believes what you cannot see and what you cannot feel based on God's word or what God has said. You believe it is true when you cannot see it. Now we, we find that kind of faith taught about by Jesus in Mark 11, 22, Mark 11, 22. And all the modern translations will say, have faith In God, Jesus answered. However, we pointed out that the New Testament was written in Greek. And if you have a study Bible, it might read, make this note, either a margin note or a footnote. The older Bibles often have this note. It said that in the Greek, it literally says, have the faith of God, changing the word in to the word of, because Jesus was not telling the the people, Peter and the others, to have faith in God, because faith means believe. So he wasn't telling them believe in God. They were Jews. They already did believe in God. But Peter had been amazed that the fig tree had withered when Jesus cursed it. So Jesus began teaching about this other kind of faith. It is not natural faith. It is the God kind of faith. Have the faith of God is the literal translation of Mark eleven twenty two. Now, I would even recommend if you don't have a footnote or a margin note, you write that in your Bible. Make your own note, footnote, margin note, whichever. The literal Greek reads, have the faith of of God, the faith of God. Well, the faith of God is God's faith. I mean, you wouldn't say the dog of John. You say John's dog. So the faith of God is God's faith, which is also the God kind of faith, God's kind of faith. It is a supernatural kind of faith that does not believe what you just see and feel, but it believes what God has said when you don't see it, when you don't feel it, when there is no physical evidence. And we said, that's when you need to believe it the most. For example, you don't need the God kind of faith to believe you're healthy when you can see that you're healthy and feel that you're healthy. When you go get a physical exam and the doctor says you are on top notch condition, you are physically fit, perfectly healthy, nothing is wrong with you, then you don't need the God kind of faith to believe you're healthy. You can get by on natural faith when you are healthy. You can get by in natural faith. The same is when you've got lots of money in the bank, everything is going well, you've got a good job, money in the bank. You don't need the God kind of faith to receive supply and provision for your needs. Because you can already see it and feel it. It's there. The money's in the bank. You can get by with natural faith. And natural faith is what even the sinners and unbelievers have. Anybody can believe it when they see it in the bank. The time you need the God kind of faith is when you don't see it, when you don't feel it. Why? That takes us on to the point we were talking about. We're talking about descriptions of the God kind of faith. First of all, faith is a spiritual law, means it's constant, works for everyone all the time. But then we went on number two, faith is a spiritual force. Actually, it is not any faith. Natural faith is not a spiritual force. Only the God kind of faith is a spiritual force. And so you need the God kind of faith 
when you're sick because you need the force of faith to work in your life. You need the God kind of faith when you're broke and penniless, have no job. You need the God kind of faith because you need the force of faith to work in your life, in your situation, to turn it around, to change it, to bring you from sickness into health, to bring you from lack into abundance, to bring you from defeat into victory, to bring you from being under the barrel to being an overcomer. It is only the God kind of faith that can do that because The God kind of faith is a spiritual force. What is a force? A force is power, strength, and energy. Power, strength, and energy. I like the word power. It is power that produces an action in something else. Power that produces an action in something else. And again, if you did not hear our broadcast last week, go back to the archives and listen to them again. And we talked about how even wind is a force and water is a force. It is power that produces an action in something else. And we said, write this statement down. The greater the force, the more is moved And the faster it moves, the greater the force, the more is moved and the faster it moves. So the greater the wind in a tornado, it can move buildings. It can tear down buildings and it moves very fast in a flood. The water can bring great destruction. It can move boulders. It can carry a semi truck and it moves fast. Well, the same way. With the force of faith, faith, the God kind of faith is a spiritual force. The greater your faith, the more is changed in your life and the faster it changes. If you're wondering why things don't change very fast, why things are not changing fast, maybe Now, this is one of the reasons could be maybe you need to see if you need to increase the force of your faith. There can be other reasons, but this is one possibility. Perhaps you need to increase the force of your faith because faith is a force. It changes things and it moves things, producing an action, the actions that faith can make faith can create things and faith can change things, create things and change things. We see that God used the force of faith when he created the heavens and the earth in Hebrews 11, three, it says by faith, we understand that the universe was formed or created at God's command or by God's word, So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So some people say that God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. That is wrong. It's not true. God did not make the heavens and the earth out of nothing. He created the heavens and the earth out of something that is not visible. It was the force of faith. And as we'll get into later, verse one in the King James translation, Hebrews 11, one says forth faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith was the substance that created the things. Faith is the force that created things. And we see that in Genesis one faith creates. However, you and I are not probably going to operate at the level God operates at you and I probably cannot even create a BB, but we can change things. We can 
change things. Faith changes things. So if you have a situation in your life that needs to be changed, then use your faith as a force. Put it to work as a force working against those problems to remove them and to change them. Amen. Now, I want to sit back up and say this. Natural faith has no power. Natural faith is powerless. So if you're going to just live by what you can see and feel and not believe anything except what you see and feel, not believe anything except when you have physical evidence that it's there, then you are powerless to change it. Those who live by natural faith alone, that they believe what they see and feel. We gave the example that when the doctor gives a a report, a diagnosis, maybe you have cancer, you have blood tests, x-rays, everything confirmed you have cancer. If you operate by natural faith, you are powerless to do anything about it, except what medical treatments can do for you, chemotherapy and that sort of thing. You have no spiritual power. And remember, we talked about when we introduced the laws of the kingdom, the spiritual laws of the kingdom. We said God created man in his own image. And one of the great things and characteristics about being created in the image of God is that God gave man creative ability. However, natural man is very limited in his creative ability. He's limited by his own natural knowledge and natural strength and power. However, when you learn to use the spiritual laws of the kingdom of God, you go to another level. You go to actually even another dimension of power. You get beyond natural power and natural ability when you start using spiritual laws, you get into supernatural power and supernatural ability, supernatural power to heal what the doctor says is incurable, supernatural power to fix what the natural mind says can never be changed. It will always be like this. You have supernatural power to change things when in the natural, it looks impossible and natural man says it can never change. Nothing can ever happen. You see, natural man is powerless to change things beyond his own physical strength and knowledge. And that's where in the book of Psalms, let me turn over there real quickly In the book of Psalms, it says that man is like the beasts of the field. Man is like the beasts that perish. And what does that mean when it says man is like the beasts that perish? This is in Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Verse 13 starts out by saying, this is the fate of those who trust in themselves. Trust in themselves. So this is those who are operating only on their natural knowledge, natural power and strength. They trust in themselves. Go down to the last verse of the chapter, Psalm 49, verse 20. 
This says a man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. The beasts that perish. And so you can actually apply that to all those who trust in themselves, those who operate by their own natural knowledge, natural strength. They are like the beasts that perish. What does that mean? Well, the beasts or the animals of the field have no ability to change their circumstances and conditions and surroundings. When there is a storm, they cannot stop it. They cannot change their surroundings. When there is plague, they cannot stop it. They cannot cure themselves. Beasts perish in the field because they are powerless against natural forces that would come to destroy them such as storms or disease. In the same way, the Bible is saying the natural man who trusts in himself, or we could say the one who uses natural faith, the only thing he's going to believe is what he can see. Then he is also like the beasts. He's like the animals. He is powerless to change his circumstances. Another way to say that those who operate by natural faith, they will always be the victim. They are always the victims of the circumstances. They are those who are the victims of situations. They are the ones who are the victims of, of the economic recession, they're victims of the hurricanes, they're victims of, you know, the flu is going around. But you see, it's not only sinners that are using and living by natural faith. Also, a lot of Christians only live by natural faith. So when it's flu season, And you turn on the TV and all the commercials talk about the flu and you're going to get it too. Then those who, even Christians, if you're using natural faith, you say, well, I guess I'm going to get it too. Everybody else is getting it. Well, then you are now a victim. You are powerless to change the situation or to get victory over the situation. So using natural faith, you will always be the victim. You will always be powerless to change your situations and circumstances. And when you just think, well, there's nothing that can be done, then you are using natural faith. Because the God kind of faith is the power to change things. You can operate in the God kind of faith. That's where that's what Jesus used when they were out in the boat on the Sea of Galilee and the great storm came up and the disciples cried out in fear. Lord, save us. We're going to drown. They were using natural faith, said we're going to drown. And they would have been the victim of that storm. However, Jesus stood up and used the God kind of faith and he calmed the storm. He rebuked the winds and the waves and the storm is calmed. Now, most people are like the disciples in the boat crying out in fear. Oh, God, we're going to drown. Oh, God, we're going broke. Oh, God, we're sick. Oh, God, we're going to get we're going to go under in this recession. They're like the disciples. Using natural faith, you will always be the victim and you'll go down right with everybody else who's going down. But if you would be like Jesus, Jesus used the God kind of faith. He stood up in the boat and he spoke to the wind and to the waves and said, peace, be still. And the wind and the waves became calm. 
He changed the situation. The God kind of faith is the power to change things. You will never be the victim of your circumstances. If you use the God kind of faith, because with the God kind of faith, you have the power to change your circumstances. The God kind of faith is a spiritual force power that changes things. I want you to get this. Don't just live by natural faith. Because then you will always be the victim of your circumstances. You will go down when everybody else goes down. But instead, you stand up in the boat like Jesus stood up in the boat. And you start exercising the God kind of faith. Everybody else will look at you in amazement like the disciples looked at Jesus. But you start using the God kind of faith because the God kind of faith is spiritual power. It is a spiritual force to create things and to change things. You say to the wind and the waves, peace, be still, and they will be still. You are no longer a victim when you use the God kind of faith because you can change your circumstances and conditions. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You will never be a victim when you use the God kind of faith because you can change your circumstances. And now before we close, I want to mention again what I shared with you last Friday, something very significant in this ministry. And that is that in this last nine and 10 months in 2023, there has been a very significant decrease in partnership support. And I heard in another meeting that there are many churches and ministries that are experiencing the same difficulty in a decrease of partnership support and attendance and participation in the ministry. And I know there are ministries that are growing and thriving. That's exciting. But there are still many that have seen a significant decrease just this year. And so I had to pray about it seriously and lay it before the Lord. I've been praying in the spirit and the Lord told me to bring it to you, the listeners. And that is because we are making a decision about what we will do with airing this program in January and how often will it be on the air? We're not expecting to go off the air because we do have very, very faithful, committed, loyal partners. However, due to the significant drop of partnership this last year, if we continue as is, we would not be able to be on air five days a week in January. We will need to make some cutbacks. And so bringing it to you, asking you, do you want this radio program on air five days a week, Monday through Friday? I know this radio program is blessing many people. I have many testimonies. I have a thick, thick file folder of beautiful letters from people who have written in and testified that this teaching has changed their life, impacted their life, given them fresh revelation. And so we really do appreciate these letters. We've also had many emails. And I know that this teaching is not taught everywhere. There's a lot of churches that don't teach. Actually, most churches don't teach what I'm teaching about the kingdom of God and the spiritual laws of the kingdom and how to use your faith and your spiritual authority to get the victories you need in your life. And so I'm bringing it to you by the instruction of the Lord. Do you want this radio program on air five days a week starting in January? And if so, then it's time that we need a big, big, significant jump in partnership support. And that means you. And really, this month of November is 
quite the determining month because even in December, we're going to have to make that decision before the end of the month. So before we would have all the partner support in for December, we're going to have to make a decision what to do in January. So this month of November is very critical for us to know what is our partnership support going to be in January. And if you want this radio program on air five days a week in January, then jump in now in this month to support this program. And it would be helpful if you tell us that your gift will be a monthly contribution Occasional gifts help, but we cannot budget based on occasional gifts. So if your gift and contribution will be monthly, regular, committed, dedicated, then it would help us if you let us know that. Include a note or a memo with your contribution saying you're committing to support monthly. And then we'll be able to have the facts that we need to make the budget. And we really appreciate and bless all of your support as always. You can go to our website to give online at victoriousfaith.co, victorious like a champion, faith.co, co like Colorado, and go to the giving page to give online. And if it's your first time to give by Zelle, please give us your email address in the memo line so that we can contact you and respond and thank Thank you and give you the receipt for your contribution. Also, you can write to us by postal mail at P.O. Box 509 East Lake, Colorado 80614. And we bless your seed and we command it to be fruitful and multiply 100 fold in Jesus name. Now, join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.